my name is Nile Jefferson. I got these uh, mics from a fella called Brian Kelly. Uh, Brian Kelly had the contract for the cavern to supply the microphones, the wiring and the PA equipment which started about uh, 57, I think January 57 the cavern opened and every week he'd come in and do whatever needed doing because these particular mics are the w original ones that were used until 1962-63 heavily used by the Beatles. Brian Kelly ran Alpha Sound 50 Stewart Road Waterloo just around the corner from Johnny Guitar I was going down because I was building speaker cabinets and in the end I was the sole speaker cabinet manufacturer for Hesse's and Rushworth's under the trade name Stag and the ones here in the studio are all built by me, Master Sound and I designed them, that's what I, I was doing as an engineer and I was learning my trade. So I used to go to Brian for speaker chassis, I've still got some of the old chassis out here and microphones and I saw Brian in 64, 65 and he told me he'd put the original ones away because they kept getting damaged and Bob Waller was forever telling everybody not to blow on them because the microphone has a transducer in the shape of a ribbon it's a double ribbon mic about this thin and that long in the middle and if you blow hard on it it cracks it just snaps but they were developed so two people can sing on either side which is ideal for the Beatles Be uh, Paul and George normally would join on that side and then they'd switch so I only needed two on the front of the stage and one at the back for the drummer they never used um, goosenecks or things over they just used them by the side of the drummer like this which was fine because they pick up from quite a way away because these mics are actually designed for studio use they're a very high quality mic uh, 20 hertz to 20k and I really don't know why Brian used them. He shouldn't really use dynamics, because dynamics last a lifetime. He's just got a simple diaphragm in that goes backward and forward. But he used these maybe to get a bit more output, because the, the um, amplifier they used was a Vortexian 30 valve amplifier, and that would be flat out. So you could only get out what you put in. So these had a higher signal, and they were also uh, dual or triple uh, contacts on them, so you could have low impedance, high impedance, or a quasi in between. These three are 1.74 kilo ohms impedance. So they had a quasi impedance which suited the Vortexian valve so you could get more gain on it. That's, that's why I use them. But they were prone to uh, damage. But having said that, they, they were good mics when they worked well and the ribbons were working. And most of the guys in the groups, when they got used to them and didn't blow on them, and use them like they should do, slightly bent over and sing across them. You should always sing across the mic because you don't want to flatten the diaphragm or the ribbon. You want it to oscillate freely, go back and forth freely. Most guys got quite used to them. Ted was great on them. Lennon and the boys were, were very able to use them well because they had a nice warm uh, bottom end for the harmonies and the Beatles were particularly renowned for the harmonies and they did suit them. Here's some uh, guys who use them you might recognise. Um, up here, of course, the Beatles' early Dick Matthews photograph. And the bands didn't carry PA in these days, remember? Nobody carried mics in those days. You hired them or you used what was at the venue. These were at the venue. So the Beatles there. Is that John? John there. And a lovely one there with Paul. Paul's voice seemed to suit the mics because he had a more uh, mellow, rounded voice. It sounded nice on them. Yeah. And that ugly swine there's me with the Master Sounds in early 64. We actually took over from the Beatles in August 63 when they left. And Bob Waller gave us their diary. And for six months we were screamed at like, uh, like we were stars which was very nice and I bought them not as an investment just as a because it was it was the Beatles and it was associated with them I bought it in 68 I think about these three on the stands and I put them away and I've never uh, used them since and nobody's ever touched them or been near them since mm -hmm.